Uh, hi, everyone. I am Yun Mok Son from KAIST. Uh, this is a jo joint work with uh, Ho Chol Shin, Dong Gan Kim, and Young Seok Park, Juan No, Ki Bom Che, and Professor Jung Woo Che, and Professor Yong Dae Kim. Today, I'm going to talk about drones, especially attacking drones. Drones are widely used for delivery, search and rescue, photography, and private harvest. Another interesting application is the air terrorism using a weaponized drone. A few weeks ago, a gun-firing drone was a big issue in the US. I think it's because this drone can attack someone by itself. Also, recently, an authorized drone approached, approached uh, some important places or people very closely. These happenings show that some attacks using drones are possible and they are not easy to detect or defense. So these days, many governments are interested in shutting down these drones. Until now, several attacks have been proposed. The first one is physical attack, such as shooting with a gun, capturing with a, with a net, and destroying them using high-power laser or bumper drone. RF jamming and spoofing can cause denial of service or taking, con taking control of drones uh, through the wireless communication channel. A software hacking is also possible because drone is a, also a kind of embedded system. And some drones are equipped with GPS receiver to know their location. These drones can be guided to the attacker's place or some other places by GPS jamming or spoofing. How about sensors? Sensors are very important for drone's operation. However, sensing channel of drone have not been, been investigated yet as an attack vector. So we asked uh, this question. How secure is drone against uh, intentional interference on sens this sensing channel? This is a basic block diagram of drone system. The most important part is the flight controller. This is a, the brain of drone. A user transmits the control signal to the flight controller, and then the flight controller decides the, the speed of rotors. However, it is impossible for human to control uh, drones corresponding to every variation of environment. So to maintain the balance of drone, inertial measurement unit is required. Uh, inertial measurement unit is, a, unit is a set of sensor, and it is the cochlea of drone. So using two inputs from user and sensor, the flight controller can decide the control signal for all rotors. Inertial measurement unit is a set of sensor which measures orientation or rotation of drone's body. One of the main sensor in IMU is MEMS gyroscope. MEMS means a very small machine or mechanical structure. Because of MEMS technology, the gyroscopes are integrated into a small chip. So Today, they are more and more popular. This is a conceptual structure of MEMS gyroscope. There is a sensing mass in the middle of structure. This sensing mass is continuously vibrating along to X axis. When rotation occurs along to G axis, a force also occurs in Y direction. We can measure this force and the amount of this force means the amount of rotation. Because of this 
vibrating mechanical structure, the mechanical resonance is considered as an important factor for lamps gyroscope. Here is a short video about mechanical resonance. In this video, mechanical resonance can break a glass using a specific frequency of sound. So, high power sound noise can cause uh, the mechanical resonance in MEMS gyroscope also. This mechanical resonance degrades the accuracy of MEMS gyroscope. This effect is already known in MEMS research community, so to reduce this effect, it is recommended that MEMS gyroscope should have uh, the high, uh, the resonant frequency is higher than 20 kilohertz. In other words, higher than audible sound range. The problem is that people have considered uh, this resonance effect just as a just as a performance degradation. However, we thought we can use this effect for attacking drones. This is our test bed to investigate the gyroscope output under sound noise. The blue box is target gyroscope to investigate, and the red boxes are for generating sound noise. We used a consumer-grade speaker to generate single-tone sound noise. The distance between sound source and the gyroscope was 10 centimeter. The sound, the sound source is connected to the audio amplifier to increase the power of sound and then connect it to the external sound card to generate both audible sound and ultrasound. Green boxes are for measurement uh, to, to read the, the data from gyroscope. Using this test bed, we, we scanned the sound frequencies up to 30 kilohertz with 100 hertz of interval. All experiments are conducted in a room that has no sound reflection. This room is called an echoic chamber. This is a picture of our, our test in an echoic chamber. The sound source and the gyroscopes are fixed to separated uh, frames. The sound pressure level we generated was around 90 decibel. 90 decibel is considered as the sound level of a noise factory or heavy truck. We tested 15 different kinds of MEMS gyroscope. Especially two of them are equipped on our target drones. I'll explain about them later. Among 15 kind of MEMS gyroscope, scope, we found the resonant frequencies from seven of them. The first three gyroscopes are manufactured by STMicro, and their resonant frequencies are not open in public. But by our scanning, we found their resonant frequencies in audible sound range for all axes. Other four gyroscopes are manufactured by in one sense, and their resonant frequencies are described in, in their data set. But except the last one, we found their resonant frequencies only for G axis. It is because we could not generate efficiently the sound frequency above 30 kilohertz. So this result does not mean that uh, they don't have the legend frequencies for X and Y axis. For the last one, we found each legend frequencies for, for all axis. And the legend frequencies of these four gyroscopes are exist in ultrasound range. This means we cannot hear the sound. Uh, to show the amount of sound noise effect, we measure the standard deviation. These figures are standard deviation of the, the output from 12 identical 
gyroscopes. You can see that uh, the output of all gyroscopes have high standard deviation near, near 8 kilohertz in x-axis and y-axis, also in g-axis. The last graph is the output from one gyroscope among 12 with 8 kilohertz of sound noise in time domain. Uh, without noise, the output of gyroscope is like the red line, but by sound noise, the output of gyroscope uh, highly fluctuates, like the blue line. So this abnormal output has not only high amplitude, but also fast changes. So our next question was, what is the impact of this abnormal output to the, to the actuation of drone system? To answer this question, we analyzed two open source formula programs. In, those, in these programs, we found the rotor control algorithm. As I mentioned before, uh, the flight controller has two inputs, the transmitter data from user and the gyroscope data from sensor, and one output, the rotor control data. This pseudocode describes the rotor control algorithm briefly. The first thing we found in this code is that before actuation, the rotor control value is bounded between predefined min and max values. The sec second thing is the, rot the, the gyroscope output affects to the rotor control directly, and there is no filtering or verification for sensor output. The last thing is that the rotor control value can be abnormally increased when the current value of gyroscope output is high with fast changes. So based on this analysis, we tried to attack drones. At first, we built two DIY drones using commercial IM news. The first one is equipped with the gyroscope made by ST Micro, and its resonant frequency is, is in ultra uh, audible sound range. And the second one is equipped with a gyroscope made by Invensense, and its resonant frequency is in ultrasound range. Both drone, drones use different firmware, but the main control algorithms are almost the same. For our real-world attack, we attached a Bluetooth speaker on the target drone to control the sound remotely. And we also attached the sonar and the wireless modules to monitor the status of this drone. In our demo, uh, the sound noise will be started after, after 10 seconds of normal, normal flight, and then will be kept for another 10 seconds. Here is our demo. This is normal flight for 10 seconds. Uh, right after our attack started, the target drone falls down and cannot arise during our attack. After attack, it is controllable again. This is the captured data during previous, previous demo. The first graph is the output of gyroscope for three axes. Using this data as an input, the flight controller decides the uh, rotor, control, uh, rotor control data, the second graph. Uh, because our target drone is a, a quadcopter, so there are four rot rotors in second graph. Region A and C has no sound noise. Region B means the duration of our attack. 
In region B of the first graph, the gyroscope output is disturbed by our attack. Due to this disturbance, the rotor control data also fluctuates almost between mean and max values. Because of this unexpected uh, fluctuation, the target drone lost its control. So the last graph is altitude data from sonar. You can see here a sudden drop occurs in altitude at the beginning of region B. Our attack work, works for target drone A, but not for target drone B. The main difference is affected axis. Target drone A is affected for all axis, but target drone B is affected only for G axis. We think the reason of this failure is that X and Y axis are more critical for drone's stability. Because for drone, G axis means horizontal orientation. On the other hand, X and Y axis mean vertical rotations. Because we used a small consumer-grade speaker as our sound source, we want to know what will happen if we can use more powerful sound source. In our experiment, the minimum sound pressure level for attack was about 108 decibel at 10 centimeter of distance. By the relation relationship between sound pressure level and the distance, Theoretically, the attack distance can be increased to 37 meters using a more powerful uh, sound source that can generate 140 decibel at one meter. For example, using this kind of sound source shown in the slide. We think our, our attack can be applied to several ways. It is possible to attack the vic a victim drone using another attacker drone with sound source. Sonic weapons and sonic words are also possible like these pictures. We also tried to test uh, long range attack and sonic war, but they were, they were not easy. The reasons are here. At first, we tried to attack using a uh, three by three uh, speaker array that we made, but okay, look at this crazy experiment. Uh, it was really hard to aim at the moving, moving target in the air. We also uh, borrowed a long-range acoustic device uh, that can generate 140 decibel. But this device is optimized for human voice, so it cannot generate the sound frequency that we want. Moreover, it, it is really heavy. <laughs> we also built a simple sonic wall using 25 small speakers. Let me show you our result. Yeah, in this result, in, in, in our test, the target drone just passed through without any response. Uh, we think it's because our sonic wall is too thin. Actually, this sonic wall is almost sonic curtain, not even sonic wall. So we think we need, we need thicker Sony wall to attack. Uh, there are several countermeasures, but we tested for a simple one, physical isolation. Physical is isolation is shielding from sound. So we put four different materials between so uh, sound source and the gyroscope. As a result, uh, physical isolation can reduce the effect of sound noise to 20% for X and Y axis and to 60% uh, 
uh, for g axis on average. So this, this means that a good casing can be a good defense uh, for this kind of attack. So in summary, our, works, our work is a case study for a threat caused by malicious sens sensor input. We found the resonant frequencies from seven kind of MEMS gyroscope. And we, we figured out the effect of resonance in drone's firmware and demonstrated our attack against drone in the real world. We also suggested several attack scenarios and defenses. Uh, because most of, most of existing defenses need some modification in hardware, so now we are inter interested in developing a software-based defense against sensing channel attack. I want to end my, my presentation by saying this. Sensor output should not be fully trusted because there are always bad guys like us. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hi, Kyle Saska, CMU. So great work. I only saw your plots briefly, but it looked like when um, there was variance, it was both up and down on the plots. Have you looked at things such as um, taking moving averages or something like that towards reducing the variance, even though it would sort of introduce a lag or some latency in the measurement? Do you mean that the directivity of gyroscope? Yeah, so, so taking a moving average over the gyroscopic samples in order to reduce some of the variance that you were experiencing. Uh, ah. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tak from Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. And thank you for the great work. And do you have, uh, have you analyzed how the sonic sound is delivered to the MEMS chip? Maybe it is once converted to mechanical vibration of yeah. the flying object, and maybe, you know, there's um, conduction of vibration within the you know, chassis and also PCB board or something like that. Have you analyzed that kind of stuff? No, the answer is no, because we don't know the, the structure inside each chips. So in, in, in our work, uh, the gyroscope is just a black box. We just know input and output. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Okay. Uh, because you know the vibration may have orientation, so you know there was a, you know success and fail between the you know uh, drone you, you know, products. So maybe you can reason the success and the fail of the experiments by analyzing the mechanical. I, I cannot hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, because you know, um, maybe that kind of mechanical analysis can reason why one drone can be attacked and another cannot be attacked. Yeah, th that's common too. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. It seems like uh, you mentioned at the beginning. Uh, acoustic uh, can affect different types of MEMS. So I'm wondering whether you tried other types of MEMS uh, sensor, like sonometers and maybe microphones. Yes. Uh, in our experiment, uh, we found some other response from She's accelerometer. If you, oh, okay. From accelerometer. You tried accelerometers and you found the same phenomenon? Yes, yeah, similar. I see. But different frequencies. Different frequencies. Yes. I see. So, is there any reason why you choose to present gyroscope uh, didn't present other sensors result? Uh, because for drone, uh, the main sensor is gyroscope. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. In your videos, 
it appeared that um, most of your um, operators weren't wearing headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the noise pretty loud? Speaker, sorry, the headphone key was wearing it. Ah, it was uh, in in the second video. You mean? Yeah. yeah. So let let me answer. So so we borrowed the 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 shield from police. And it was like a twenty thousand dollar shield, and it was playing like a hundred, I think one hundred fifty dB, and I mean you cannot, you cannot you know exp do any kind of experiment inside a kind of gym, and you you're gonna it's gonna break your ear. So that's why they had to use all those things. Yeah, I mean, I, frankly speaking, that I think. I mean, all the theory and everything was easy. I think on, the most difficult one for this paper was actually all the experiments, because whenever it breaks, I mean, whenever we are successful, it's gonna break the, you know, propeller and all those things. So <laughs> I think all those, like, uh, I mean, I've been doing some other work, but I mean, this kind of mechanical experiment was, I think, most painful, you know, experiments I've ever worked on before. <laughs>